And welcome to Jack Trice Field in Cyclone Stadium on a cold Saturday afternoon. It's 18 degrees. The skies are clearing and the wind west northwesterly at 13 today. It's very breezy and very cold down on the field. Now the Cowboys lead the series 15, 10, and 1. And Oklahoma State leads the series here in Ames 7, 6, and 0. It snowed this morning, and you can still see some of the snow along the sidelines. The field has been swept clean, but it is a frozen field. And that pad underneath the new All-Pro turf is going to be a little hard to land on today, George. It's a little bit firm when it gets hard. Now, I don't know if they've uh, changed things over the years with the padding underneath football fields, but when they first came out with AstroTurf fields or the, or the artificial surfaces, the, the pad would tend to get just like concrete, and it made it a little bit difficult to land on. The field, I would say, is probably as good a condition as it's been all year in that it is not wet at all. It is completely dry. Uh, they've brushed the the snow off the sideline there's some little piles of it down behind the benches that are two three feet high iowa state has won the toss and elected to take the win and kicking off rick frank drives bobby riley into the end zone and there will not be a return so oklahoma state will start out first and ten at its own 20 yard line the cowboys coming into the game eight and one on the year and iowa state four six and all and offensively for oklahoma state here's the way they stack up up front but the backfield boasts the big eight's top rusher in thurman thomas at tailback only a sophomore iowa state was offside on the kickoff and i think oklahoma going to state's going to make them kick again have to check and see yep that's what's going to happen Offside on the kickoff, and that'll push the Cyclones back. Uh, Rick Frank put the kick in the end zone to Riley, but uh, they might get a chance to run it back, and they're going to take that opportunity. Well, there's a snow shower overhead right now, and that's actual snowflakes you see there on your screen. Mini blizzard out here right now, as a matter of fact. Skies are supposed to be partly cloudy throughout the afternoon. And the wind has really picked up in about the last 10 minutes or so. Blowing right out of the west-northwest now and very briskly. It wasn't, wasn't too bad when we were down on the field earlier looking, you know, checking the turf. It was, uh, it was quite nice and sunny, bright sunshine, but uh, things have changed. Welcome to Iowa in November. Well, Rick Frank teased it up again the first time he did such this afternoon. It blew off the tee, so that gives you an indication of the wind. And the wind chill today has to be disastrous. We'll check that out for you a little later. Five below zero, our producer just told me. Five below for a wind chill. Frank, line drive, <laughs> sailing to the end zone. This one won't be returned either. And this time there is no offside. So the penalty for not. And Oklahoma State still at their own 20-yard line. And defensively for Iowa State. A couple of good seniors right there up front. Lester Williams and Jim Lubbers on the ends playing their last ball game in a Cyclone uniform. All juniors in the linebacking core. And the only senior right there is strong safety Anthony Mays, who has been a good one. Here's Ronnie Williams, the quarterback now. He's only a sophomore, but a big, strong lad. 6'4", 210-pounder. Wants to throw. First play from the scrimmage. Incomplete intended for Bobby Riley. That might have been a changed play. The Cyclones indicated they were coming with an all-out blitz, and I think that uh, Ronnie Williams might have made the change at the line of scrimmage and gone to the pass play. Just a quick out pattern, and he threw it way high. Head coach Pat Jones... In his second year at Oklahoma State, alternates wide receivers bringing in the play from the sideline. This time, a double slot right formation. And a flag on a procedure penalty, perhaps. Mm -hmm. The officials today, headed by a referee John Laurie, And a five-yard infraction being incessed. Oklahoma State pushes them back to the 15, brings up second and 15. And as you can see, I think one of the linemen went in the down position, and then yep. uh, the quarterback moved him over to the other end of the line. And uh, after you're set, you can't can't do that. A couple new red helmets out there for the Cyclones. Dennis Gibson wearing one is 
well as Anthony Mays for the final game of the year for the Cyclones. Williams over the middle, overthrows everybody again. Incomplete. And Williams finding it difficult to grab the touch today in the cold weather. Hey, he's a big fella. Williams is one of those quarterbacks you kind of dream of having around. He's 6'4", 210, a sophomore out of Wichita Falls, Texas. Good-looking young man, but I would guess maybe there is a little bit of a problem. He's barehanded. Uh, see a lot of the Oklahoma State players and a lot of the Iowa State players wearing the, the black scuba diver's gloves, but uh, the quarterback not. Well, you got to keep in mind, there is Anthony Mays in the red helmet. And Dennis Gibson also has one today. The linebacker on the right side will show you him in a moment. Third and long. Intended for Thomas. Intercepted. Picked up by Mylon Pitts. And the Cyclones have the football at the Oklahoma State 21. Pass is deflected. Cyclone's coming hard, getting good pressure on the quarterback. The ball is tipped, I think, twice. I think an Iowa State player hit it first. And Refner comes up with it for the Cyclones. I always said Milan Pitts, but it's Brian Refner with the pass interception. And Iowa State taking advantage of a costly early turnover. Espinosa now directing the Cyclones at the Cowboy 21 and a half. Here's the play action fake to Thomas. Screen to Suffren. Up to the 18 and driven back. First to meet him was number 10, Mike Hudson, the strong safety. So very little gain on the play, but catching the Cowboys perhaps off guard. One of the plays that Coach Kreiner said that they might use before the game. He uh, just a little hitch pass out to the side, but uh, Oklahoma State defensed it pretty well. Alex Espinosa with a hooded sweatshirt today with a little pouch in it there to keep his hands warm. Andrew Jackson getting the start of tailback. He had a great game last week against Kansas State, but he's got a bad set of knees after that game. Jim Kreiner said he didn't know how long Jackson could go, but he gets the call today. And this time he's inside the 15. Jackson down to about the 13, tackled by Mike Hudson and Ricky Adams for the Cowboys. And defensively, here's the way the Cowboys look. Leslie O'Neill, a definite All-American candidate. And Mark Moore right there, the free safety, is one of the hardest hitting safeties in the Big Eight. Good blocking on the last play by the left side of the offensive line. Keith Sims and Eric Hundor. Third and one. The pitch to Jackson. May have the first down. He'll be close. Gets up to around the 12. Watch the right side blocking. See Jasper pulling. They kick the defensive end out, but Jackson runs into too many bodies. Looks a lot like Oklahoma's defense. Oklahoma State runs extremely well. Andrew Jackson in 85, 27 carries, 219 yards and one TD. He also has one as a pass receiver. Had a great game last week, 140 yards on the ground. Measurement close. And let's see if they give it to him or not. I believe it's going to be about an inch or two short. So now it's fourth and about four inches. And Alex Espinosa signaling to the sideline. And I'm sure that Jim Kreiner is going to go for it. Espinosa in 85, 150 of 301, 1,608 yards, ranked fifth in the Big Eight in total offense. Iowa State electing to go for it. Fourth and one, split set formation. Thomas, the fullback, moved to the left side. Jackson to the right. Espinosa sneaks for the first down. That's what I wanted him to call up. Espinosa right behind Maudley and the guard. You see the Lawrence coming, also coming into the play, but the right guard, Vince Jasper. You watch Jasper slide in. They'll take number 80 and just leave enough room there. 84 gets to the play, but uh, too late. Leonard Jackson trying to react quickly, but the Cyclones uh, double-teamed the man on the nose, John Washington, who's a great one for Oklahoma State, 6'4", 274. First and 10 for Iowa State at the 10 and a half yard line, so they can still pick up first and goal. Jackson up the middle, down to the five. And the little man from California gallops right up the middle for a five-yard gain. Ricky Adams brings him down. His cyclone offensive line working extremely well. There's that big Washington 80. You see him right there. You see 
Shannon Maudsley handles him pretty well. Jackson picks the hole, gets in behind Vince Jasper, and Jasper held the big man off long enough to pick up about five. Wide receivers to both sides. I formation for Iowa State, second and four. Jackson again. Cuts back against the grain. Gets up to about the two. Actually, the one and a half yard line is where it will be spotted down. And Iowa State taking advantage of a key pass interception and marching deep into the Cowboy territory. Well, this is a great shot, I'll tell you, from up above. You can see it all right here. Notice the double team on Washington. They take him out of the play. Number six comes in to make a fine play. But excellent job by the two men in the middle. Took Washington, the nose guard, right out of the play. And a very smart cutback by Andrew Jackson, who read the blocking extremely well. Third down and one. Double tight end formation for Iowa State. Watka on the near side. Espinosa to throw. The Watka touchdown. Play action fake into the line, and then a soft touch to Jeff Watka, the leading tight end receiver in the big eight and wait a minute it may go for not we may have delay of game against iowa state watch the great fake here oh they nailed jackson and espinosa you know, watka watka did a nice job to get loose from number 91 warren thompson excellent job it will be nullified by a delay of game penalty. And Iowa State takes the six off of the board. And they will move the ball back to the six-yard line. And now it brings up third down and five. Both wide receivers split to the far side in tandem. Now in motion comes Dennis Ross to the near side. Espinosa to throw, looks for suffering, and drops it. It was right there. Hughes Suffren could not hang on. Well, Hughes made a great move inside. Great move inside and was wide open. The pass right, right in the hands from Espinosa. There's Suffren. He's completely wide open. Boy, no reason for that. Well, now Rick Frank comes on, and they'll have to settle for three if he can hit it. This will be a 23-yard attempt straight away with the wind sort of swirling. A quarterly win. Frank should have no difficulty here. The ball is down. The kick is up. And it is good. And Iowa State is on the board. Although they would have liked to have seven, they have three. And with 11.15 to go in the first on a cold, snowy one, Iowa State takes the first lead. Did you know that over eight hours of hand labor go into the average Foreman and Clark suit? Take a look at this coat. See the slightly uneven stitches? They're hand sewn to make the coat more comfortable and resilient. And that's not all. This coat is part of a vested suit that sells for a lot less than you might expect. So look closely when you shop for your next suit, sport coat, or overcoat. And look for this label. It's your best guarantee of quality and low price in men's clothing. Nine other sports fans at once. Call Gab Sports from Northwestern Bell. What a great call. 11 minutes, 15 seconds remaining. You'll be playing in the first quarter, and Iowa State captures three by means of a field goal from Rick Frank. A 23 yarder, eight plays, 21 yards. And it was all set up by a Brian Reffner pass interception of Ronnie Williams. Rick Frank to kick off again. And this one sailing into the end zone. Bobby Riley takes it about three yards deep and will not return it. So again, Oklahoma State starting out at their own 20-yard line. And a costly delay of game penalty cost Iowa State four points in the early going. That may be crucial when we get down to that fourth and final quarter. No doubt about it, George Turner. The Cyclones want this ball game. They are fired up. They uh, are really inspired to play good football. They were. I thought they played extremely well last week, and the seniors are ready to go out with a bit of glory. 
Thurman Thomas, ironically, the Big Eight's leading rusher, has yet to carry the football. It's been three passes by Williams. Now Thomas on the draw. Scampers outside. And he's buried by Brian Reffner at the 22. Thomas has excellent speed. He's only a sophomore, 5'11", 186 pounds, first in the Big Eight, fourth in the nation. And he's also first in the Big Eight in scoring. I'll tell you, that was just a straight dive play, and Thomas just broke it outside, saw that the line was clogged up, the Cyclones had it stopped, and went outside and picked up a good solid three. Give Thomas a gain of three, brings up second down and seven. Thomas again gets the carry, up the middle this time, and Dennis Gibson fills the hole. Thomas still gets another couple across the 25. That's junior linebacker Dennis Gibson, number 57, right there on the red helmet. See him fend off the block and get involved in the tackle with Thomas. Nice defensive work, along with Greg Leiter. Well, we have a man down on the field, and it's Mylon Pitts who is being attended to by the trainers right there. Pitts, of course, has been injured on a couple of occasions this year. He has been fighting some ankle problems. He's a six foot, 183 junior, and one of the top cornerbacks in the Big Eight Conference. And he's going to be assisted off the field. Aaron Manning coming in to replace Milan Pitts now. So we've got Manning at one corner, Anthony at the other. It'll be Repner and Mays still at the safety spots. And Mays up on the line of scrimmage may be showing a strong safety blitz. Williams on the keeper. Does sure. not get it. I don't believe. Bill Bertheson makes the stop for Iowa State, and Williams may come up about a yard short of the first down. About a yard and a half. Good defensive play by the Cyclones option play and the quarterback kept the football but didn't get it well now it's putting time for oklahoma state rich thompson comes in he's averaging 39.8 yards per punt jeff dole back deep for iowa state thompson will be punting into a stiff wind he's not very good in the punting department let's see what happens here no he shanks one out of bounds and it's out of bounds inside the 45 the 43 yard line so Iowa State with great field position again. Don't go away. A big break for Iowa State. Nine. This plane flies donated kidneys to waiting patients. It uses a special aviation oil because a kidney on life support has only hours to get to its recipient. In freezing conditions, that all-weather oil developed by Phillips Petroleum saves time that would be lost preheating cold engines. And that could save the patient years on dialysis. Kidney looks very good. That's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, you'll find performance in everything we make. And Doug Anderson continued to lead his high school towards the state tournament when he caught the winning touchdown in tonight's big game. The most important games on earth are played right here in central Iowa. See the difference on 5 TV Sports at 5 and 10. Iowa State, first and 10 at the Cowboy 43-yard line after a 15-yard punt by Thompson of the Cowboys. Pat Jones had been experimenting with various punters. Here, wide open is Andrew Jackson over the middle. Great move, but caught from behind. Caught by Leonard Jackson, a chasing defensive tackle, but Jackson down at the 20. I hope we get a shot of this. There's a great block by Hughes Suffren. Suffren is down on the near sideline as a receiver, but it comes over the middle. Andrew Jackson makes a couple of good moves. He'll make one right here to get by number six. There was the block right there. It wasn't Suffren. Outstanding play, outstanding running by Jackson. First down, Iowa State at the 21. This time, it's Marcus Rogers up the middle. A flag goes down on the play, however. Rogers gets up to about the 17. Now, let's take another look from a different angle at Andrew Jackson's first down gallop here a moment ago. Oh, no, this is Marcus Rogers. Rogers straight into the line, but somebody hooked one of the Oklahoma State players, and that'll be a 10-yard holding call. 
Cyclones are fired up. This is a eager group of guys. They'd like to finish this season with uh, with a win over one of the rated teams in the country. They've played well at times, and uh, they hope to put it all together today. It is holding against Iowa State. A 10-yard penalty will put the ball back at the 28-yard line, and the snow shower continues, and it is really snowing right now. Even though the sun is out, you see shadows on the field. Mark, they only took it back nine yards. Espinosa, quick handoff to Thomas, the fullback, gets up to about the 25 and just barely across it. Still will bring up long yardage coming up. Adams and Ham, the linebackers, make the stop. Ground level look at this play with Thomas carrying the football. Just a quick handoff, and Thomas with explosive speed, but Oklahoma there with the good linebackers. Outstanding quick team, Oklahoma State. Not like Oklahoma, but uh, not too far behind them. And their 10th rating in the country indicates that they are a fine one. Second down and 14 for Iowa State. Espinosa rolling out, going long, and has something. Down to the 12. Going to be just short of the first down. I think Espinosa took a pretty good hammer after he gets the ball off. No, nope, he didn't at all. Pass down, Suffren. And he gets held up by number two, and everybody else comes on to make the, make the job complete. Melvin Gilliam, the defensive back. Well, instead of a second and 14, it's third and two now. Suffren, of course, 25 catches on the year coming into today's what, game. What, what, Big eight player of the week last week. Oklahoma State almost had a man offside. Watch this, a little timing pattern. A number two fell down, and Suffren makes the extended grab for it. Catches it in the end zone. Super play. Just a little quick pass. You see number two slip on the turf. Oh, great catch. Rick Frank on for the point after coming up. And Hughes Suffren, a 13-yard TD, and it's a fumble snap. Espinosa fumbles the ball, and the conversion fails. I think it was a bad snap. We may have to see this again. I don't know if it was a bad snap or if it was a set play going for two. But in any event, Iowa State fails on the conversion. We won't have another look at it. But with seven minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the first quarter, Iowa State has rolled out to a nine to nothing lead. And one more time, let's take another look at a great touchdown catch by Hugh Suffren. Espinosa just back a couple of steps, a quick throw. It's a timing pattern. He has to beat the man. You know, saw his defensive back fall down. Suffren made a great extended grab for the football, and he's in the end zone for a 13 or 12-yard touchdown pass. Must have got those gloves warmed up, huh? Well, I hope so. I, I'm not a great fan of those black gloves. I think that they use them to keep warm until they go out on the field, but I, I hate to see a receiver especially wear them. Well, you know, one of the wisest decisions of that man today may have been to take the wind rather than the football, even though they won the toss. You know, when they were warming up before the game, I don't think that it made any difference. There's a look at the scoring drive. 43 yards and four plays. That's, that's potent offense right there. Rick Frank getting set to kick off for the third time today. 7.52 to go in the first. And Iowa State coming out with a vengeance. He's drilled two of them into the end zone. This makes three in a row. Riley, way back in the corner of the end zone, will not run it out. Why is this team so fired up today, George Turner? Well, I'll tell you, it's the last game of the year, and they have played good at times this year. Now, they've had some games that were big disappointments. The Missouri game, I think, for one. The Drake game for another that they thought they should have won, but they just didn't do the right things at the end of the games. And I think that they've, uh, they've made a renewed commitment to really play good football. There's some good people here. Uh, they're not blessed with deep talent like a lot, but uh, they want to win desperately. Well, keep in mind, OSU is explosive. They scored three touchdowns in a couple of minutes last week. Roddy Williams to throw. Timing pattern to the flat. Incomplete. He was out of bounds anyway. Intended for Terry Weimer, the split end, and broken up by Aaron Manning on the coverage. Aaron Manning. Hey, look at Williams. Has good protection. Goes back. Everett trying to get up in the air to block. And it's just a timing pattern. Goes down the side. Manning is there, but the receiver was out of bounds. Gave him a little shove as he caught the football, but it wouldn't have made any difference. 
Iowa State, second in the Big Eight against the pass. Oklahoma State goes to Thurman Thomas, and he is sacked by Willie Everett. Dropped for a loss of two. This is one of the plays. Thurman Thomas likes to do this. Go into the line, see what's going on, then dive outside, and Willie Everett wasn't about to have any of that. Everett, Gibson, and a bunch of others. And you can see on the sidelines that there is renewed emotion for the Cyclones this week. The finest performance I've seen so far of the red and gold this year. And it's a long way from being over. Third and 11, Williams wants to go topside, going long. Oh, what a catch. No, it's incomplete. I thought for a moment it may have been caught, but it was not. And there may be a holding penalty in the Oklahoma State backfield against the Cowboys. Holding call against Oklahoma State. Cyclones will turn it down and uh, have Oklahoma State try and punt it again. It will be declined, and Jeff Dole will come on now to receive the punt. Let's see if we have a new punter out there. Nope, same guy, Rich Thompson. They're going to try to quick punt it here before Iowa State gets ready. Thompson this time hangs one high in the wind, and I don't know if anybody's going to touch it or not. Yep, Dole collects it, drops down in his tracks at the 45. So again, Iowa State starting out in Oklahoma State territory. 6.56 to go. In the it's not too early to start thinking about next April 15th. The steps you take before the end of this year can have a dramatic effect on your tax return. I'm Paul Strasser. Congress may soon make changes for 1986, which will overhaul the entire tax system as we know it, including deductions that we've become accustomed to. Join me to learn how you can effectively plan your 85 return in anticipation of the changes in 86 with year-end tax planning. Weeknights at 10 on 5 TV's Iowa News Tonight. One child, one life, your chance to give. Hello, I'm Julie Andrews, here to talk to you as a foster parent. It still amazes me that it takes so little to do so much. Less than 73 cents a day for food, schooling, and medical supplies that might even save a child's life. Please join the Foster Parents Plan family, because you care. All right, Iowa State starting out first and 10 at the Cowboy 45, a 27-yard punt for Thompson. He's got a 21-yard average now on two punts. Espinoza, Jackson, intercepted, Mark Moore. Moore picks it up, and he's still going. Midfield, the 50, the 40, the 30. And knocked out of bounds, way down at the 20-yard line of Iowa State, but two flags fly. And maybe a clip against Oklahoma State. A big play team, Oklahoma State. Jim Kreiner said they had to avoid the big play. And an illegal block against Oklahoma State. Low block below the waist. That'll shove things back a ways, but Oklahoma State now with good field position. First time so far in the game, and the Cyclones... I'll tell you, that was, a, that was a pass right on target to Andrew Jackson. He had to turn a little bit for it, deflected it, and a good good alert interception. Let's take a look at it and see where Andrew Jackson was. I'd like to have your guys react. Notice he's wide open down the field. He had to turn. The ball has popped up in the air. And number 44, Mark Moore, picked it off. Boy, he can move, too. All right, Oklahoma State football. First and 10 at the Cyclone 35. Iowa State showing blitz. Handoff Thomas, and he is dropped for a loss, but a flag goes down. Maybe offside against Iowa State. Well, yeah, offside or maybe a hole. I think that flag was coming in from the umpire. Iowa State says it's against Oklahoma State procedure. You bet. Yep. Saw the right guard pull out of there too quick, Doug Meacham. And Thomas is paying the price today. Moves the ball back to the 40-yard line now, so Oklahoma State having absolutely no offense so far today. I watched him run out on the field for the first series, and he just kind of strolled out there like big deal. Well, he better get warmed up for Oklahoma State because they're going to need him. Keep your eye on number one, Bobby Riley, split to the top of your screen. I sense pass coming. Here it goes. 
Going for Riley, overthrows him. Riley Williams not on target. Williams having a bad day passing the football in the cold weather. The windshield five below zero down there on the field. Don't be misled by Riley's size. He's 5'9", 170-pound junior out of Stroud, Oklahoma. But he can move, he can catch the football, and super elusive when he does catch it. Second down and 15 now for the Cowboys. Six and a half minutes to go in the first. The ball on the 40-yard line of Iowa State. The deepest penetration of Oklahoma State so far set up by a Mark Moore interception. Blitz being shown by Iowa State. Corner blitz. Little screen pass to Thomas. Lubers is there. Blocked out of the play, and Thomas goes nowhere. A loss of one. A tackle made by Randy Richards on see Thurman Ruffner. Thomas. See Ruffner coming into the backfield. Now he's chasing the man. Now he sees it, tries to jump up and deflect the ball, but Thomas catches it, and right there is Lubers. Lubers is blocked out of the play, but he had the right position. He made Thomas come back inside where all the Cyclones were. That's good defensive work. Greg Leiter and Randy Richards combined on the tackle. Third down and 16 now for the Cowboys, who keep moving backwards. Ronnie Williams trying to run out of the pocket. A little swing pass outside. And Will Timmons, the fullback, will not get the first down as he's dropped by Randy Richards. Well, I'll tell you, there's some hard hitting going on. They almost had Williams this time in the backfield. He looks, wants to go left. Now he sees a little pocket, goes up. Lester Williams almost gets there. He does complete the pass outside, but you see Anthony Mays playing great position on him, not letting him get by, and Randy Richards in to make the tackle. Well, now, let's see, we've got a new putter in there for Oklahoma State. It's going to be Kerry Cooper, a sophomore from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. They apparently were not happy with Thompson's 21-yard average. So Cooper comes in to punt now. Well, this might be their short kicker, too. <laughs> to pull Iowa State offside, but they failed to do so. This one hung up into the wind and punted out of bounds, and let's see where the ball spotted. It's going to be around the 23, 24-yard line. About 16. kicking for the corner, trying to kick it out of bounds. I think that guy might be their short kicker, Mark, or Gary Cooper out of, Kerry Cooper out of Broken Arrow. He was trying for the corner, sideline, get it outside, and he did get Cyclones inside the 20, but not, not a very good punt. All right, they'll start out at the 15. Espinosa, four of seven today, with one TD toss already, and 50 yards to his credit. This time, to Jackson, up across the 20. Leonard Jackson makes the tackle on Andrew Jackson, but there's a gain of a good five right there. And Andrew Jackson playing sore today. 27 carries, 219 yards, one TD as a rusher, and also one touchdown as a pass receiver out of the backfield. He comes into the ball game, averaging only 35.8 yards per game, but last week he had 140. He's got five carries for 20 yards today. And he gets another one right here. And he gets another top four, close to five. He should be just a hair short of the first down. Espinosa trying to keep his hands warm in that kangaroo pouch of his jersey. John Washington made the stop for Oklahoma State. He's a big, strong nose guard out of Houston, Texas, a senior. Oklahoma State will graduate four of their five front men. And if you look at it overall, six of, uh, well, let's see, two, four, six, six of 10 of the two deep. Third down and one for Iowa State. A little too far maybe for a sneak. Nope. Espinosa tries. And let's see if Espinosa gets it. According to the side judge, he does. According to the side judge, the ball will be a first down. And it is. First down for Iowa State. Think about a change in any one guy on the Iowa State lineup. The Harkins. Espinosa. He was not a runner. He was told not to run in high school and had not run. And this year, all of a sudden, uh, he's a running back. Look at that. 4 nothing. A shutout and first downs for Iowa State. Busted play. Fumble. Espinosa may have covered it. The guard pulled as Espinosa was backing out and actually knocked the ball out of Espinosa's hand. Espinosa recovering the fumble for the cyclone. 
Alex is the last few weeks, I'll tell you, he's made a made a whale of a difference. And I think starting Derek De Janeiro down at Oklahoma, it's unfortunate that Derek broke his leg, but I think that awakened Alex Espinosa and he decided if he was going to be the starting quarterback, he had to do the things they wanted him to do and do them right. Second down and eleven now for Iowa State. They line up in a double slot formation. Watka on the near side, Jackson in the slot to the left. Penalty flag goes down. And the draw play up the middle with Thomas gets up across the 30. Let's watch the door open up here. It may go for not, though, as flags fly. That's Jan and Maudsley working on that big fella in the middle. There's the hole right there. Hundorf trying to find the man to block and couldn't get a shoulder on him or might have gone for a lot of distance. Well, the penalty is going to be assessed Oklahoma State, isn't it? That's what they're indicating. Oh, yes. Let's get the indication from referee Bob Laurie. Offsides, Oklahoma State. So Iowa State will take the yardage. It'll move the ball across the 30 and preserve the down. So now it is second down and five at the 30. Thomas, the fullback, playing his final game as a senior for Iowa State. Jackson goes in motion to the near side. Espinosa wants to throw, and he better hurry. Gets rid of it. Good, wise decision by Espinosa because charging through was Leslie O'Neill. And another flag is down on the field. Let's see what this one's all about. You know, during the year when you watch a team, you hope that they get better. They improve as the season goes along. And the Cyclones, Cyclones were kind of up and down for a while, but in the last couple of weeks, they have improved drastically. Well, they are picking up the flag. So it brings up third down and five. Cold day, thought it was a hanky. Well, next week we switch from the cold outdoors of Cyclone Stadium to the warm, very warm and exciting indoor atmosphere of Hilton Coliseum. Iowa State basketball comes your way next week. We'll tell you more about that a little later on. Split set formation. Alex Espinosa straight back to pass. Now scrambling. Flag down. Espinosa close to the first down, but I think Vince Jasper is going to be caught for holding. That's too bad. Alex made a good move on the play, had good running room up the middle, and I think you probably see Vince Jasper. He's off to the right-hand side right there. See him now, grabs the man, and Espinosa goes up the middle, goes to the ground before number 40, James, James Ham can have a free shot at him. The play before when the flag was down and then they ruled it off, that uh, pass interference, I think, was called against Oklahoma State, but the ball was tipped. Well, it's only illegal use of hands, not holding. So it's only a five-yard penalty instead of ten. And that may have helped somewhat because instead of third down and 16, it is now third and 11. Split set formation. No doubt about a pass coming up here. Espinosa, plenty of time, going long for suffering, overthrows everybody by about five yards. Step for step with Hugh Suffern was Melvin Gilliam, who is a flyer at the right cornerback slot for Oklahoma State. And I think for the first time today, Iowa State will be forced to put away the football. Good wind at Rick Frank's back. Bobby Riley back deep to receive. Frank is averaging 41 yards of boot. But this one may get some assist from the wind today. Hold on the hands. He's got it. And he unloads it. End over end boot. This one will take a roll. Riley tries to find the handle, fumbles it, gets it, and is driven out of bounds. He's out of bounds officially at the 28-yard line. Oh, almost mishandled About by Bobby Riley. Pretty close to a 55-yard kick by Rick Frank, and uh, maybe even a little bit longer than that. But uh, I thought for a minute the Cyclones might get a shot at a recovery, but the ball popped up right for him, and he got the good hands on it. Riley is only averaging 9.4 yards per punt return. His longest has been a 25-yarder. And that punt by Rick Frank was a 55-yarder. His longest on the season, a 67-yarder. So his average is certainly picking up some steam today. Rick Frank, of course, wearing a red helmet, the honor helmet 
Bestowed on him by Jim Kreiner when he feels the youngsters of all big eight caliber. And there's Pat Jones, good man, like him. Wearing that big orange and black stocking cap, second year, and comes in here with a record of 18 and three as a head coach. And that's not bad for a start, George. I don't think it comes, comes into Ames with all the orange and black, and it kind of fits in with the Ames high school colors. Iowa State's defense being tested now. Oklahoma State has netted only 10 yards from scrimmage so far in the ball game. Thurman Thomas tries the right side and runs into Dennis Gibson. And gets back to the original line of scrimmage and nothing more. It's good, solid defense. The Cyclones have played good defense all year, but I think today they're really playing under control. You see Gibson right there. Doesn't make the commitment. He just waits for Thomas to get to him. He had no place to run. Playing under control. 57 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Second down and 10. No game. Timmons the fullback. Thomas the tailback. Wide receiver split. Thurman Thomas again. Picking and choosing his way for a gain of about three. Gets across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Nothing more. Just not much of a hole here. No place for Tom. See right there? They're just nothing. No crack for him to find, and he's good at that. But the uh, Cyclones in on the play. Hey, they're just doing a heck of a job. Perry Lowers made the stop. Cyclones ranked second in the Big 8 in pass defense, allowing just 142.6 yards per game, and sixth against the rush, allowing 201.7, and ninth in the nation against the pass. So even if Ronnie Williams does warm up his hands and find the touch today. He's going to find the going a little stiff against Iowa State. Timeout called on the field momentarily here. Look at these two teams in the Big 8 Conference standings uh, rushing off against Oklahoma State. And as, and as good as Thurman Thomas runs, Oklahoma State is no better than fourth in the league in rushing. 197 a game and they're almost 200 yards behind Nebraska and Oklahoma. Uh, Iowa State ranked seventh. Pass, uh, rushing, uh, yeah, rushing defense. Oklahoma State is third, Iowa State sixth. Passing offense, they're almost uh, right in the middle. Iowa State third, Oklahoma State fourth. So Oklahoma State not, not strictly a, a running team. You think that they might be, but in the top 25 runners in the conference, the only guy there for Oklahoma State is Thurman Thomas. Iowa State utilizes one of its three timeouts. There's only 18 seconds left to go in the quarter. They want to try to get the ball back with the wind if they can. Iowa State showing blitz and then backing off. Doing a lot of stunning today. Ronnie Williams quickly batted down the line of scrimmage by Jim Rivers. Perfect play. I'll tell you. Oklahoma State will have to punt away the football and Iowa State will have the win to its credit for the punt. So they will have good field position again and Cooper comes on the punt. That timeout was called perfectly. Terry Cooper, only a sophomore, gets off a nice one that's going to fall short, takes sort of an Oklahoma State roll and go dead at about the 47. So there's still seven seconds left to play in the quarter, and Iowa State will still have the wind at its back for at least one more play and excellent field position. A 21-yard punt by Kerry Cooper. And punting problems have plagued Pat Jones all year. And into the wind here at Cyclone Stadium, they're magnified today because the wind strongly at the back of Iowa State in the first quarter. I guess they might go for the touchdown right here, go for a long one, and then next play, they're probably going to be against the wind. Iowa State in the eye. Play action fake by Espinosa. Looking long over the middle. Overthrows everybody incomplete. And that's the end of the first quarter. No. Oh, wait a second. We've got another second left on the clock. The cannon went off prematurely. So Iowa State will get another play. They had a misfire with the cannon. <laughs> Question is, can they get reloaded in time now? One second left to go. Somebody has a hair trigger over there. Well, well there's one way to stay warm. Second down and 10. See if they go for the first down here. Go long. Draw play. Andrew Jackson runs out of room at the line of scrimmage, changes direction, and still gets a gain of seven. Boy, it's a good run by Andrew Jackson. 
He plowed into the Oklahoma State players and really took them backwards. Well, now the quarter's history, and it's 9-0. Iowa State owns the first period. We're a producer of electricity, a supplier of natural gas. We're a coal transportation company, a developer of real estate, and a computer software specialist. We're Iowa Resources, and we're proud to be a part of Iowa's economic growth, now and for years to come. Iowa Resources. Living, serving, and most importantly, believing in Iowa. Today's ISU football brought to you by the Greene County Cyclone Club, supporting ISU student athletics for excellence in the 80s. Ames Savings and Loan. It's the people behind you that count. Ames Savings and Loan Association, Ames and Story City. Jennings Clothing. Jennings Clothing, ladies wear and men's wear, Humboldt, Iowa. Throughout the years, there have been many classic teams. Why? Because with teamwork, you get a synergy, a combined energy that becomes greater than when two people work individually. Wiley and Donovan are another one of those classic teams who just go together. Turn to 5 TV News at 5 and 10, and you'll see the difference a great team can make. signs are often misunderstood. Dazed behavior, loss of awareness, aimless movements. You on something? Hidden signs that may point to a common type of epilepsy. What's of course? Early recognition and treatment of seizures can help keep kids like Evans on the team. Get the facts. Write Epilepsy Foundation of America, Washington, D.C. to 0013. Nine nothing as we start the second quarter. Oklahoma State still looking for their first first down of the ball game. They failed to get one in the entire first quarter. And keep in mind that the Cowboys are ranked seventh in the nation. Seventh in one poll and tenth in another. And uh, they're, they're figuring to go to, uh, well, if they if they don't win today, maybe the Fiesta Bowl. If they don't win today, maybe, maybe uh, the same bowl Iowa State's going to. They might not play any place. Andrew Jackson goes in motion on second or third and three. Draw play, Kirk Thomas, first down, second effort. Good job by the fullback, Thomas. Gets to the 40, dropped by Leslie O'Neill, the all-Big 8 tackle. He played hopscotch when you were a kid. Watch Thomas's feet here. He just kind of pecking around to try to find a place to put the foot down. He put it on the leg, pulled it out of somebody's hands. Just keeps pecking away at it. Nice run. Kirk Thomas playing his last game in a Cyclone uniform. Total offense, look at this. 90 to 17, Iowa State. But now the wind is in the face of Iowa State. We'll have to see if they can sustain a drive into the wind. Thomas, the ball carrier again. Very little yardage this time. O'Neill grabs him and a host of others at the line. He gets about two across the 40, barely. Talk about Leslie O'Neill a minute. He's, a, he's an All-American candidate. I'll tell you, 6'3", 245 senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Has great agility, good speed for a big man. Uh, they're going to miss him. He's a three-letter man. He's one of uh, three out of the front four that will graduate. Second down and nine for Iowa State. This time, Jackson in motion. Espinosa wants to throw. Uh-oh, he threw that one right into the waiting arms of Oklahoma State's Harry Roberts. And I tell you what, somebody ran the route wrong on that one. That was just perfectly thrown to Roberts. Second interception of the day for Espinosa. And they're talking about it right now. As you can see, Jim Kreiner doesn't like that at all. Just a mistake on someone's part. And Alex back has plenty of time, has good protection, throws it. And the ball just, well, looked, looked to me like maybe it was it came off his hand funny, just slightly. But now you see the fine defensive play made right there. Brett yeah. Lawrence pushing him out of bounds. Second turnover of the ball game for Iowa State now. And the defense being called on. Lone setback is Thurman Thomas. See what happens here. Thomas with a host of blockers out front. Still gang tackled as he crosses midfield. 
Gets a gain of about four or five. Bill Bertheson leading the charge. There you see Mylon Pitts, who's back in the ball game, and he may be shaken up again. Better let him see you, Mylon. Yeah, don't, don't stay in there if you're hurt. Mylon Pitts is shaken up, and the officials have called time and asked for the trainer. And on they come. There's Mylon Pitts. Terrence Anthony comes out to replace him. I tell you what, you talk about determination by a young man. He has been hurt so many times just to go to the sideline, tuck it in, suck it up, as Jim Kreiner calls it, then come back out and fight the battle again. And he'll be back yet probably again today. Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that might, that might be a upper leg injury, a hamstring or a quad, and I don't think he's going to come back. Pull sometimes causes a problem like that. You, you get a slight pull, you don't get stretched out completely before the game, and you stand around a little bit, and it does make it tough, and then you make a sudden movement and pull something, and it's just a touchy day for everyone to play. Second down and five now for the Cowboys. Thomas again gets the ball, dumped right at the 45. And I mean to tell you, he was really hit. Hit by Greg Leiter and Lester Williams. Watch Leiter, number 90 right there. He just stuffs his lineman right there. The play comes right over the top. Leiter just pops him up in the air. Didn't get a hold of him, but he made the play, made the tackle. Third down and two. Cowboys looking for their first first down of the day. This time the eye formation. Here comes the blitz. Dumped off to Thurman Thomas for a loss. And Williams is sacked by Leiter. Randy Williams or Richards makes the tackle on Thomas and they will stop him short of the first down. I believe it's uh, Greg Leiter comes right through. Just squirts off his man. He has Williams right there. Pulls him to the ground. They dump the ball off to Thurman Thomas. Slips a little bit. Almost goes down. Gets back up and wishes he had him. All right. Now it's Rich Thompson to punt the football with the win. Dole will let it bounce. And it's going to be down inside the 10. Does not take the bounce that Iowa State would have liked. Look at this. Rolling down to the 1. Well, the field position changes. But does the momentum. Will in the next session of Divorce Court. Success made Jonathan self-destructive and resentful. The comic strip was a total bore. I hated my job. And my wife froze when I touched her. He tried to tell me I was frigid because I wasn't kinky enough for him. Just touching Sarah's a risk. You might get frostbite. He gave me a drug and I felt out of control and he told me he was satisfied for the first time in our marriage. Divorce Court, weekday mornings at 10 on 5 TV in just a moment but first an important message you're a veteran right how do you get information on veterans benefits such as disability compensation here's a few simple va forms and regulations here's more on many had the five and his whistle dead on the one half yard line <laughs> iowa state starting out in its own end zone in reality see what play jim Kreiner has elected to call here hand off jackson Tough yardage, maybe a yard or two, and very little working room. You might say, why don't you run wide? Well, people can react quickly. You remember the Kansas game when Willie Pless took the man in the end zone for a safety? You just you try to get what you can so you can get out and get a little bit of working room. There's, there's a yard and a half. That's a start. There's Andrew Jackson, who has really been paying the price and doing a great job for the Cyclones in the last two ball games. Gets the call again. Across the five to about the seven, but a flag flies. I think that's a hole, too. That scares me. Jackson, the ball carrier. Here's a look at Jackson from right straight up above him on top of the scoreboard. Good hole, and I think I saw the hold right there. Warren Couldn't Thompson tell. makes the tackle on Jackson. I think it was Vince Jasper came back and just reached out and kind of grabbed the man and pulled him down, and that'll happen. It's not an indictment of Vince Jasper or any other lineman that does it. It just happens at times, and sometimes you get your hands in a position, they'll go by the man, and it looks like you're holding him. You're actually not, but the officials are there to make the call, and that's what they call. Well, this time, the holding can only be a yard penalty, only halfway to the goal line. 
So this is interesting. Now it is second down and nine. And Marcus, Marcus Rogers comes into the ball game now to replace Andrew Jackson at tailback. Quick kick. There's the rushing stats, 14 for 43 for Iowa State. Let's see what the big freshman can do now. Put some muscle into his legs and go to it. Here he comes. Rogers bangs a few bones and rambles his way across the five to about the five and a half. Warren Thompson makes the stop again along with James Hamm, and it will bring up third down and about six. Watch Rogers. He follows, he follows fullback and he uses him for as far as he can take him. Then just keeps plugging away, trying to get what he can and get it out. Cyclone's got a good shot at getting the first down. Kirk Thomas doing a good job of blocking in that last play. Rodgers comes into the ball game with 315 yards on 91 carries, averaging three and a half a carry. He'll get the pitch here. And he will not get the first down. A little slow to develop on the play. Ricky Adams along with Warren Thompson stuff it shut. And Rick Frank will have to punt him to the wind. Now, he had a 51-yarder last time. This will give you an idea of what the wind does to a ball up in the air today because I don't think he'll get close to 51 yards this time. Well, he's due to hit one. He, the last the point he got 50, 55 yards on, he didn't hit it real good. Uh, it hit and rolled, but uh, he could a spiral and get it boring into that wind. He could pop it out to near the 50. Bobby Riley back deep to receive for Oklahoma State. Frank with plenty of time. It's sort of a shanker that's heading out of bounds. And it bounces back inbounds, a lucky bounce, and it's going to be blown dead at about the 29. So no, he does not hit one. 22 yards. 22 yards. Well, we'll have a break right now. We'll be back with more. The Cyclones leading right now, 9 to nothing. When you come into Foreman and Clark, it's easy to see this overcoat's classic clean lines. It's all wool fabric and low price, but it's the extra touches like the Bemberg satin lining and the resiliency of hand sewing that make this coat special. The same goes for this double-breasted trench coat. Its price and look are great, and the zip-in liner makes it light, easy to slip on and warm. So don't be fooled by Foreman and Clark's prices. This label is your best guarantee of quality and value. This is Mark Matthew inviting you to join 5 TV each and every Sunday night at 10.30 for the Jim Kreiner Show. Coach Kreiner will review Saturday's game and talk about upcoming opponents. In addition, we'll feature profiles of Cyclone players and interesting stories on other Cyclone athletic departments. That's Sunday night at 10.30 on your TV station, 5 TV. Oklahoma State, first and ten inside the Cyclone 30. Ronnie Williams wants to throw and has Riley inside the 20. He's down at the 18 and a half yard line. Aaron Manning on the coverage, but maybe a little too much pad on him. First first down of the game for Oklahoma State, and that little fella right there is a good receiver. Sixth in the Big Eight. 29 catches for 514 yards, two touchdowns, averaging 17.7 a catch. Thurman Thomas gets the call, tries the left corner, and there's not much there. About two or three yards, up to about the 15. Jim Lubbers and Brian Ruffner combine on the tackle. I think the coaches have scouted this well. This is the, the they, let, they let Thomas pretty much do it on his own. They look like they're going into the line almost every play, and then he just takes it on his own. They concentrate the blocking inside. Try to put everybody in one little pile and then turn Thomas loose outside. There's Thurman Thomas. Averaging 5.4 yards a carry for the season in the Big Eight. The leading rusher. Williams wants to throw and it is poorly thrown, incomplete. And that was intended for Terry Weimer, the split end, on just a little slant pattern across the middle. I'm not overly impressed with Williams as a thrower. Maybe the cold weather has something to do with it. Maybe the extra clothes he's wearing under to keep warm. I don't know, but uh, he has not looked sterling as a passer. Well, Oklahoma State deep in Iowa State territory, and they are within range of Joey O'Donnell for a field goal attempt if they don't make the first down here. Third down and seven. The ball on the 15, Iowa State showing stunt and then backing off. And a fumble snap. Williams falls on it. So now 
it will be a field goal attempt. Balls up, just, just didn't get it in his hands. Hit the center right on the bottom and dropped to the ground. Well, Brad Dennis will be the place kicker, not Joey O'Donnell, and Dennis will try to tack on a 33-yarder. The ball is down, and it's a fake. And Iowa State does not allow Oklahoma State to score. Now, did he fake it, or did this holder just barely lose the hand? I think, I think the holder blew it because I looked downfield when he got up to run, and there wasn't a receiver anyplace. Everybody was in blocking, so I don't think it was a call play. I think the snap was a little bit high, and he didn't get it down in time, and the kicker went on by him. Here's a look at it. See the snap, and he up, yep, he, he bobbled it. The kicker, kicker came in there. There's the kicker gone. Now, we got a naked quarterback right there. Everybody gets a shot at him. Now, he's only a freshman, the holder. The holder was Roderick Gaines. Iowa State takes over. Jackson back in there, and look at him go. About a nine-yard gain before Leslie O'Neill drops him across the 25 at the 26. Give some kudos to that offensive line. Look, look at that pile up right there. There's the hole. Kirk Thomas putting the lead block on number 54, taking him out of the play. Ricky Adams and good running by Andrew Jackson. Running under control. You notice that they're not great burst of speed. Go by anybody, just under control. Eight carries, 38 yards for Jackson. Here's another. Make it nine carries as he gets up close to the 30-yard line, and he'll have the first down. Andrew Jackson, 5'10", 185-pound junior, averaging 3.7 yards a carry, and the crowd loves it today. You know, he's a, leads the Cyclones in rushing, but he's a good receiver also. Caught 27 passes for 219 yards, has a touchdown, averaging 8.1 on pass receptions, a complete ball player. Jackson this time runs out of running room, and maybe Kirk Thomas missed the block, but I'll tell you what, Warren Thompson was there in a flash. Loss on the play of about four, sets him back to the 25. I think that's the first play for a loss today, isn't it, for Iowa State? Yeah, I believe it, I believe it is. I Second so. down and 14 coming up. I think Espinosa also had maybe a sack there, too. Big play here. High formation, handoff, Jackson. A tough two at the very most runs into the nose guard, John Washington, who's a big 274-pound senior nose guard. This Washington's a good player. Watch him. He'll avoid the block by Maudsley. Maudsley, Maudsley stayed with him for quite a while, but uh, play a little bit slow developing, and uh, Jackson came back to the left side. If he'd gone right, he might have gone a little further, but... Washington there to meet him head on. That's Shen not a match. Shannon Mosley, 259 pounds. Washington only 274. On a big, long third down play, Jackson trying to get outside. He will not get the first down as he's run out of bounds. See where they spot the ball down at, and I believe it's going to be just barely across the 30s. So Frank will have to punt. He'll have some room this time, but still against the wind. He's averaging 38.5 yards per punt today. Has a 55-yarder and a 21-yarder, I think it is. Bobby Riley back deep to receive for Oklahoma State. Frank with the red helmet along with the deep snapper John Smith. And this one is going to take a cyclone roll and then go back the other way. That wind is playing funny things down there, and it's going to be whistled dead at the 45 of Iowa State. I tell you, that ball bounced up in the air. It was going north, and before it lit the ground, it was down going the other direction. 5.58 to go in the half, and it's still a 9-0 shutout. For it's not too late, Herb. As that looks, it's nothing compared to the impact of being thrown against a windshield or a dashboard in a moving car. And that's why it's a child safety seat for Molly and seat belts for the rest of us. Take it from me, wrestling with traffic is a whole lot safer when you're buckled up. Seat belts, you can live with them.
If you have difficulty hearing or speaking, visit the Des Moines Hearing and Speech Center. We're never at a loss for words. Back here at Cyclone Stadium at Jack Trice Field on a cold November afternoon. And it's 9-0 Iowa State. Total offense primarily tells the story there. 111 to 34. There's Jim Kreiner looking on. You think he's cold? I'll tell you what, Pat Jones is probably a little colder than Jim Kreiner right now. Oklahoma State starting out first and ten. Ronnie Williams on the rollout. Going long. And it's complete to Bobby Riley inside the 25 at the 24. Slow developing play, and there's a good of a mark of a good receiver as Riley's downfield, and he worked his way backwards. He took the receiver downfield, pushed him away. You see Williams fakes into the line. Now he rolls out. He's got a moving pocket right there, has a lot of, a lot of time to look around and find the guy. Riley works his way back upfield, gets away from Aaron Manning, and catches the ball just before going out of bounds. First down for Oklahoma State. Knocking on the Cyclone door once again. This time, the handoff, Thurman Thomas. Tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage, falls forward for a gain of about three to about the 21. Knocked down by Bill Bertheson. You can watch the hammering going on in here. You see the block right there on Richards or on uh, Pop Everett. And you see Lubers up come up to make the tackle or Refner. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Thurman Thomas is not having anywhere close to his average day. Nine carries, 22 yards. He's averaging 5.4 yards a carry for the season. Iowa State showing stunt. Williams wants to throw. Recovered by Randy Wood Richards as the ball popped off the pads of Riley up into the air, and Riley is down on the field. Now, Riley's hurt. He really got hammered. Good pressure. You see right up the middle by Gibson. The pass is right on target, and a great effort made, and Riley got a hand in there to knock it away, and Riley is hurt. I think maybe looking at what happened, I think maybe he broke a finger, popped a finger or something, but he, he jabbed a hand in at the football and popped it out of the hands of Richards, and I think that might be what happened. It's a little hard to tell. Well, Richards came crashing into Riley, trying to grab the loose football that was still airborne, and he just head-on collided with Riley. Wow, what a hit. Five minutes, ten seconds left to go in the half. Still nine to nothing. And let's see where he got hurt one more time. Let's take a look at it. The ball will be in the air. And watch, watch 59 Randy Richards come charging into number one Bobby Riley. We'll show it to you right here. Watch this. Shoot the ball right up there. Watch the Riley collision. makes an effort to get back for it. Richards homed in on it. And you can't really tell. Might be in the shoulder. Might have, might have jammed a shoulder. Might be the neck, too. They hit helmets head on. I mean, boy, he got his bell rung. He's seeing stars. Good, solid football game. His replacement is Lynn Beck. 6'1", 189-pound senior out of Blanchard. Third down and eight now. See if Williams wants to go airborne. He's going topside. Going for everything. And dropped. Wide open was Lynn Beck. Had about two steps on the Cyclone defender and should have had it. Good throw. Right in the corner, right, right where the end zone line meets the out of bounds. Now he tried to try to one hand it, pop it with one hand and bring it back. Well, another field goal attempt coming up. This time a 39-yarder. Brad Dennis puts it up. Looks good and is good. So Oklahoma State with their longest field goal of the year right there, believe it or not. Brad Dennis, a 39-yarder. And finally, the Cowboys get on the board, and it's 9-3. Oklahoma State will kick off now with the wind at their back, and we'll have to see what kind of field position Iowa State will get. That wind is so strong, blowing from left to right as you watch this game. You know, Mark, I was watching the Oklahoma State field goal kickers before the game, and none of them seemed to have real strong legs. I was watching Dennis kick, and Dennis was having a problem getting the ball over from about 40 yards out, which indicated to me, and he was kicking downwind as he was this time. And I think if, uh, if you get them in a spot in the last quarter, they might 
be, and they might be in a little bit of trouble. I don't think they have that good leg like Iowa State does in Rick Frank. Well, in all reality right now, George Turner, keep in mind that it possibly should be 13-3 because Iowa State had a touchdown call back due to delay of game early in the first. Yeah, but it isn't. It's 9-3. <laughs> See who's going to kick off now for Oklahoma State, keeping in mind what you just said, that nobody really has a strong leg. There may be a return coming up here. Five plays, 24 yards, 58 seconds. Brad Dennis, a 38-yard field goal. Yeah, this is Joey O'Donnell. He's place their kicker. usual place kicker. Yeah. yeah, he's going to kick it off. He might have a little better leg than Dennis. But, uh, Iowa State sends Jeff Dole as the deep man, and it's heading right for Dole at his own three. Across the 20 to the 23. So a 20-yard return for Jeff Dole, who came into the ball game averaging 20, or rather 17.3 yards per return, so a little better than average for Jeff Dole. And that's not bad for a freshman, I'll tell you that. Some guy they just invited out, and he came out to play, and he's a good one. I, I have great, great amount of confidence in the young man and on both punts and kickoffs. Handles the football well, picks the spot to run well, and doesn't get out of control. Just does a good job. Watch the screen pass right here. Nope. It's going to be a sweet play to Jackson, and slow developing. James Ham snuck through to make the stop on Jackson. He gets up to about the 25, just short of it. Hey, a pretty good indication of what the Cyclone line's doing today. That looked like a play where Jackson is more or less caught in the backfield and is not going to make any yardage. The Cyclone shoved Oklahoma State back, and he picked up a good two yards. It's, it's not a great gain, but it's, uh, it's better than still being in the backfield. Espinosa not having a good start anyway. He's only 4 of 11, 50 yards, but two interceptions today. The cold weather has a lot to do with it on both sides of the line of scrimmage. He'll try to pass here. And he'll try to avoid the sack, dumps it out. And Kirk Thomas went airborne for it, and maybe shouldn't have. I think it bounced off his knee. I thought it went right through his hands and hit him right in the chest. But uh, Thomas, I think, was strictly an auxiliary, the second or third receiver. Espinosa was getting good pressure, had to move out of the pocket, and did a good job avoiding the rush. Passing. Right passing situation now for Alex Espinosa. He only needs 63 more yards, George, to become the second leading passer for Iowa State. In motion goes Andrew Jackson. Draw play to Thomas. And little, if any, gain. Maybe one. It's going to bring up fourth down and long, so... Rick Frank coming on to punt away the football again. And that win, definitely a factor in the ball game, and hard to get any offense going against it. And a tackle made by Washington. And a good at indication of the speed of those big fellows. Frank's average here in the second quarter, due to putting into the wind, has been dropping steadily, down to 30.7. But this one, he gets a line drive. This one may help the average. Takes an Iowa State roll and keeps on going. It's a goodie. Inside the 35, down to the 32-yard line, and a great punt by Rick Frank. A 42-yard punt into the wind by Rick Frank. And the average climbs instead of descends. Three minutes, 29 seconds left to go in the half, and it's 9-3 Iowa State on top of the Cowboys. You think of your, your great punter as a guy like Ray Guy, who kicks the ball 8,000 miles up in the air. Average is about 42 yards a kick. And uh, Frank's had some little little bouncers that have done the same thing. First and 10 at the 32-yard line of the Cowboys. And Williams wants to throw. And has Riley isolated out here one-on-one -on, -one on Mays, and he gets by him. And then fumbles the football, but he's out of bounds. Well, let's see if he was out of bounds or not. Design for yourself right here. Let's take a look at it. Riley catches it. Make a pretty good move right here. That Anthony Mays goes down and makes a whale of an effort right here to get up in the air. Now goes down the sideline. The ball right there is popped out of his hands. It's still inbounds. Terrence Anthony is after it. Cyclones are all after it. They have the football right there, and they say it's still Oklahoma State's. Well, I think his foot may have been out of bounds. 
Here's Thurman Thomas, straight away. Little, if any, gain, a couple of yards. The, the most of his body was inbounds, and the ball was certainly inbounds, but I think he stepped on the sideline. Stay down, in the, stay down in the truck that he wasn't out of bounds, and it's one of those things. That's football. Second down and seven on the 46 of Iowa State. Long count by Williams. Play action fake, and he's sacked. The ball's up in the air. Dennis Gibson intercepts, and he's going. Down to the 10. Cyclones went a long time without an interception, and Gibson's had two in the last two games. Wow, what a play. Let's see who applies the pressure. Williams back to throw. You see right here, Lester Williams, the two defensive ends met right there. Gibson is like he's signaled for a fair catch he had so long to wait for it. First and ten on the 11-yard line of the Cowboys. Jackson slips down on the turf, and he'll have a loss of a couple as he lost his footing. Gibson's return 42 yards, Mark, down to the 12-yard line. Shades of being a high school fullback. It'll be a little tough to pick the players of the game, huh? Much wait till later. <laughs> Time clock down to two minutes, 10 seconds, starting to become a factor now. Second down and 12 at the 13. Espinosa, quick pass, batted down at the line of scrimmage. And I think the man that got a hand on it was number 99, Leslie O'Neill. Looking at Suffren straight over the middle. Watch the offensive line protection. Good, good pass. Yeah, Suffren was the receiver. I don't know. He, he might have had a lot, of, a lot of people around the football. Man that battered it down was Ricky Shaw, a backup defensive end, got a hand up on it. So now it's third down and 12. Big play, Jackson in motion. Espinosa rolling out. And Espinosa was hit just at the time. He tried to unload it to Jeff Wadka. So Iowa State unable to move forward, and Rick Frank will come on to try to field goal into the win. And let's see where he puts the tee down at. It's going to be a 30-yard attempt, right square on the 20. Just a little to the left of the center of the field, inside the hash marks. It is up. It's plenty long and up. And it's good. And it's 12 to 3. And Iowa State fans wrapped up in all the warm clothing you can get. Probably don't need it at this moment. They're fired up. Watch Rick Frank now. Puts the ball up, has a good hold, looks up, and uh, he's used to making them. The ball's through the uprights. He's waiting for the official signal. Yep, that's in there. That's what that red helmet's for. Yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. And a uh, nice young man, very, very talented. And he came in here basically as a place kicker and was called upon to do the punting. It's a little extra load on him, but I think he's handled it extremely well. Rick Frank is now 10 of 15 on the year in the field goal department. His longest being a 52-yarder. And now he's set to kick off. 12-3, Iowa State with 152 to go in the first half. And Iowa State shocking the seventh-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys thus far. Bobby Riley back deep to receive for the Cowboys. He'll be flanked back there by Harry Roberts and Curtis Looper. And the ball blows off the tee. That shows you what that wind's doing down on the field still. Yeah, it's so much stronger than it was during the pregame, Mark. I, I just can't hardly believe it. But when we were down there, it, it was very, very, very pleasant, really. 
I walked out to the middle of the field, and it was not bad at all. But, uh, boy, it's blowing now. Well, now they're going to call for someone to hold the football, and it's going to be Aaron Manning to hold it. And Aaron Manning, in turn, will become the, the safety, so to speak. He takes the glove off, and the glove's blowing away. Four plays went minus two yards, believe it or not. Hard going into that win. Let's see what Rick Frank can do kicking into the win. This is the first time he's had to do this today. And he sends a line drive that's bouncing all over the place. Grabbed by Mark Moore at the 24. And Moore wrapped up in his tracks by Iowa State. And a great defensive play by... Well, let's see who's down on the bottom of the pile. Flag flies. Matuzak. Matuzak was a man that made the tackle, and there's a, there's a flag down. Hope it's not a late hit. Uh-oh. Yep. Personal foul against Iowa State. That's costly here because the Cowboys were at the 24, and that'll be a 15-yarder. Move them to the 39. Matuzak was the guy. I don't know whether he was involved in the penalty or not. Colin was the man that hit him first, and that reversed the directions for Moore. Went back to the other side, and uh, Matuzak came in to make the good, solid smack on him. Well, the fans don't like it. Well, I'll tell you, this is the best crowd I've seen this year. It's not the biggest Iowa State crowd, but they're, they gave the fan, the Cyclone team, a standing ovation a bit ago, and they're, they're working with them today. First downs, only two in the ballgame for Oklahoma State. The defense has certainly played a game. Hand off to Thomas. A gain of a half a yard. And look who's there, Bill Bertheson. Thomas has not had a good day today, and I think if you watch watch the play at the line of scrimmage, what they try to do is they try to get Thomas into the line with a lot of people there. Then they try and get him outside, and the Cyclones are not over-pursuing as they've done in some previous games. They're just kind of sitting along the line of scrimmage and saying, we're here, you've got to come to us. Second and nine, Williams to throw, sideline around, batter up in the air, incomplete by Dennis Gibson. And Williams is having a terrible day passing. Williams back. And the ball tipped right there by red-helmeted Dennis Gibson. He's Gibson. the man who had the interception. I'll tell you, he just gets better as the year goes along. Only a junior. Third and nine. Watch play action coming up. Iowa State not blitzing. Nope. Fullback draw. Lester Williams drops Will Timmons in his tracks. A gain of about two, and it will bring up a punting situation for the Cowboys. Less than a minute to play in the first half. The clock rolling with 53 seconds left to go. Jeff Dole goes back deep for Iowa State. Going to be Kerry Cooper to punt the football for Oklahoma State. Good snap. And it's heading out of bounds. Then takes a roll. There's a flag down, downfield. And let's hope that there weren't 12 red shirts on the field or something of that sort. Well, if there was 12 men on the field, that'll be a first down for Oklahoma State. Nope, they're picking it up. Picking it up. No flag. And the ball rolls out of, out of bounds to 14-yard line. That's where Iowa State will start out. Only 30 seconds left to play in the half. Into the wind. And I would imagine right here, Jim Kreiner might be content to go into the halftime locker room with a nine-point lead. Well, I would, think, I would think that they would not do anything foolish. Try and use the clock up. Try and, try and get a first down if they can and keep a hold of the football until the half runs out. Showing passing formation. Instead, they give to Joe Henderson. Joe Henderson in there at one of the running back spots. And he has close to a first down, may have it. That's Thomas. Is it Thomas? Yeah, 33. Oh, yeah. Thomas. Here was Thomas. I thought I saw 37. He said today that Paul Thibodeau may sh see some action in the backfield and maybe Henderson, but it was Kirk Thomas. All right, the clock rolling down to 10, 9. 
And that may be the last play of the half. Yeah. It is. So it's halftime here at Cyclone Stadium at Jack Price Field, and the fans rise to their feet to give the Cyclones a standing ovation. And they deserve it with a nine-point halftime lead. Iowa State University is building a firm foundation for advancing knowledge and research. Completion of new instructional facilities for ISU's engineering college will add more than 100,000 square feet of classroom, laboratory, and research space. New facilities for ISU's agronomy department will more than double the size of the present building and help consolidate activities that are scattered over 11 campus locations. In addition to the computation center in the heart of the ISU campus, we'll bring state-of-the-art technology innovations to a central location. Throughout campus, trenches are being opened to install cables for a new telecommunication system that will revolutionize the way people work, study, and communicate on campus and beyond. Blending the old with the new, providing facilities that match its reputation of academic excellence. That's Iowa State University. It's halftime here at Cyclone Stadium at Jack Trice Field, and Iowa State goes into the locker room enjoying a nine-point halftime lead over the seventh-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. Now, I don't know what Jim Kreiner did, but boy, I tell you, he has the Cyclones fired up today. An excellent job coaching this week in practice, and what's more, the defense is playing the game of its season. Well, I think that what has happened is he's had some young players, he's had some players come into the system that has just taken him a little bit longer than he figured uh, to adjust to things and I think now that his approach to the game and his assistant coach's approach is, uh, is now hitting home with the players and they've decided that uh, a little bit of success last week against Kansas State and they've decided they, the seniors want to go out good and the, the others want to get ready for a better season next year. So I think that uh, the, the mental attitude of the whole team and I think looking across the way at the coaching staff, I think everything is solid this week and, and the coaches and the head coach Jim Kreiner have just done a heck of a job of preparing them. All right, it's halftime here at Cyclone State and we'll see if the Cyclones can pull off the upset of the Big 8 season. Don't go away. We'll be back with more after these words from your local station. It's a special kind of spirit that rises in us all. We hear a cry for help. We're there to answer the call. So many things today could use a hand, your hand, your time, your money, even a bit of yourself. We're a producer of electricity, a supplier of natural gas. We're a coal transportation company, a developer of real estate, and a computer software specialist. We're Iowa Resources, and we're proud to be a part of Iowa's economic growth, now and for years to come. Iowa Resources. Living, serving, and most importantly, believing in Iowa. Introducing the perfect snowblower for the average homeowner. The five-horsepower John Deere. Narrow enough for tight spaces, yet clears a two-foot path. It handles like a smaller machine, but throws snow as well as a big one. And since it is a John Deere, it won't let you down when the snow won't let up. The five-horse John Deere. Now there's no reason the average homeowner has to settle for the average snowblower. See your John Deere dealer. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. Today's ISU football brought to you by Wilson Hybrids Incorporated. Wilson Hybrids Incorporated, Harlan, Iowa. Or Broker Ford. Or Broker Ford, Harlan, Iowa. Monsanto Company. Brought to you by Lasso Herbicide. For less stress, more yield. It's halftime here at Cyclone Stadium at Ames, Iowa. And Iowa State leads the Oklahoma State Cowboys 12-3. Back with the second half in just a moment.
Iowa State University is a modernizing force in the global community. From its limited beginnings as an agricultural college and model farm, ISU has emerged as a broad-based university of international stature. Today, Iowa State has no borders. It is a national and international leader in providing the skills and resources needed to feed our hungry world. Students and scientists from more than 100 countries come to Iowa State to learn new skills and share in its commitment to technological advancement and world betterment. With more than 50 international development projects and exchange programs, ISU is using its agricultural, economic, and high technology expertise to improve living conditions worldwide. An academic community rich in international flavor, solving the problems of today, preparing to meet the challenges of tomorrow. That's Iowa State University. Jeff Rose. I can fully appreciate the cheering fans at the 1984 Olympic Games thanks to these. Most of the nearly 20 million Americans with hearing loss can also be helped medically, surgically, or like me with hearing aids and speech therapy. Someone you care for doesn't hear well, arrange for a hearing checkup. Call toll-free 800-424-8576 for your local hearing helpline information. You should hear what you're missing. Maybe someday you'll be in an office where everything is as reliable as a Centron communication system. Your staff. Oh, we'd love to stay late and finish that 300-page report. Your delivery system. You'll get it yesterday. Even your coffee will be reliable. But until then, a Centron communication system is about as close to perfection as you're going to get. On this earth, Centron, America's most relied on business communication system. Fifty years ago, I never imagined there'd be such a lot of us here. It feels good having the house full of family, all caring for one another. Ed and Louise have protected their home and their family with Farm Bureau insurance for nearly half a century. And we're proud we could provide a part of their caring. The Farm Bureau family is going to be a part of our family for a long time to come. Today's ISU football is brought to you by Kenworth. For all your truck needs, see Kenworth Mid-Iowa. Parts and service for all makes of heavy-duty trucks. New and used truck sales, parts and service. Kenworth is a step ahead, emphasizing quality first. Zeidlers, serving Iowa with quality concrete, culvert, and sewer pipe. Looking at the first half statistics, first downs in favor of Iowa State. The rushing also in favor of the Cyclones. Andrew Jackson has 46 yards compared to Thurman Thomas's 25. Passing game is relatively even. Two interceptions on both sides of the football. And the total yardage primarily due to the increased ground game of Iowa State over Oklahoma State. 128, 284, two turnovers apiece. Penalties close. And as we start the second half, Oklahoma State has elected to take the wind and they will kick off to Iowa State. Iowa State will go into the wind in the third quarter, will have the wind and the fourth. And teeing up the football is going to be Rich Thompson. Sophomore from Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Back deep, Jeff Dole. And here we go. And this one's sailing down. Dole will catch it in the end zone and not return it. So Iowa State will start out its own 20-yard line. Keep in mind, we are changing sides from how the game started in the first half. And let's hope it doesn't go the way of the first half because Oklahoma State started out against the wind and had difficulty moving the football in the first half. The Cyclones need to do what other teams have done to them this year. Uh, you think of the times, Mark, that the Cyclones have taken the win to start the second half, and the team has gone right down the field and scored some points, and the Cyclones unable to do anything with the win. We need to drive the other way. Cyclones on the move. Espinosa, 4 of 13 today. This time gives to Thomas. Slants off right tackle for a gain of 2 or 3, up to about the 23-yard line, 22. 
Jim Krebs, the backup linebacker, along with Mike Hudson, the strong safety, make the stop. A little bit of a change. The Cyclones using the fullback outside, Kirk Thomas, instead of Andrew Jackson. Jackson, the man out in front doing the blocking. Well, football is also a game of adjustments, and we'll see what the coaches decided in the halftime locker rooms. Uh, we're going to have a procedure penalty against Dennis Ross, a freshman wide receiver on the near side. Was not quite up to the line of scrimmage and was in motion when the ball was snapped. And Dennis couldn't make up his mind whether he was on that particular play, whether he was a back or a lineman. Uh, you have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage, and I think he looked across and realized that he was supposed to be on the line, and by the time he got there, the play was in motion, and they caught him. Don't know if Oklahoma State will take the penalty or not. They may decline it here. Illegal motion. Declined by Oklahoma State. Little, if any, gain. Maybe a gain of about one. Brings up third and long for Alex Espinosa. Third down and seven at the 23-yard line. Closer to eight, actually. And off to Jackson. Trying, trying the middle for the first down. He's going to be stopped about a yard or two short. And Rick Frank comes on to put away the football. Watch Kirk Thompson out in front. Goes into the line and blocks. Okay, pretty good run by Andrew Jackson. Picked up decent yardage up the middle, but still a yard and a half short. Wesley O'Neill made the tackle, fended off one blocker, and then came in from behind. What a great player he is. Here's Frank. Needs a goodie over Ender that's going to take an Iowa State roll. Oklahoma State getting away from the football. This one's going to go down inside the 40, be blown dead at about the 36 and a half. So a good punt by Rick Frank into a very, very stiff wind which continues to blow here in Ames, Iowa. 35 yarder and uh, considering the way the wind affects the football, that's, that's getting it down there quite a ways. Now the flags at the top of the stadium swirling, some of them blowing straight east with the wind blowing from the west and then at the north end of the stadium it's a northwesterly wind. So a swirling wind at about 22. Here's the pitch back to Thurman Thomas. Needs to get in gear in the second half if the Cowboys are to come from behind. Stopped after a gain of about three. Dropped by Chris Moore, the middle linebacker. Clean up by Anthony Mays, the strong safety. Out in front for blocking for Thurman Thomas was Paul Blair, a senior out of Edmond, Oklahoma. 6'4", 275, an outstanding lineman for the Cowboys. Ronnie Williams remains the quarterback, and they will have the wind here in the third. Iowa State not showing any blitz whatsoever as we open the second half. Williams on the rollout, looking long. And complete! What a catch! At the 15-yard line by Bobby Riley, I believe. Riley on the reception. Absolutely amazing. Cyclones had... Two defenders and two receivers in that immediate area. And this is one that Williams, he just threw it as far as he could. Just unloaded on it. You watch the position down here. And there's just a great extended reception. The defender was right there. I think it was Aaron Manning. But Oklahoma State with a first and 10 at the Cyclone 15. Jim Kreiner said in the pregame report that Oklahoma State is a big play team, and they come up with a big one here in the opening moments of the third quarter. Riley being assisted from the field. He's going to be all right, just shaking up. A 45-yard catch. He has four catches on the day for 96 yards now. First and 10 at the 15, and the defense is going to have to stiffen here. Thomas up the middle, flag goes down, and we're going to have motion against Oklahoma State. A gain of only one on the play. Well, wait a minute. Thomas says it's against Iowa State. Offsides, Iowa State. Hmm. Take a look at watch the watch the hole right there, and now watch it shut. Bluey. Bertheson there, Lighter there, and a bunch of others. Well, we thought it was motion, but apparently the official didn't flag it that way. Gain of five brings up first down and five now at the 10. And 
Oklahoma State can move to within two if they score on this possession. It's 12-3, Cyclones. Here's the pitch to Thomas. And gets a gain of about four, stopped at about the six-yard line. He'll be about a half yard short of the first down. Watch the way, watch the way Thomas moves. He'll come off the ball. He's going sideways. Now he looks and just sees a little crack and just floats in there. But watch, he doesn't run to the man. He runs right through the man. Good job by a good back. Good back doesn't need a big hole. Just about not as wide as your hips, just enough to get the feet through. Second down and one. Iowa State showing safety blitz coming up. Flag flies, and Thomas gets the first down, down to about the one and a half. And there may be offsides against Iowa State again. I don't know. Yeah, I think Mays was, Mays was ahead of the play at this side, or looked to be. Having a little... Well, there are two different flags down on the field. Offsides, Iowa State. And personal foul, Iowa State. Uh-oh, hmm, that's trouble. Still won't move the football very far, but it's going to put it right close to the goal line. Going to be first and goal at the one. And Pat Jones trying to get the adrenaline flowing. I guess probably had the adrenaline flowing going all ball game, but now getting some momentum going. That big Kevin Eggleston in, uh, an offensive tackle normally. He's now in there on defense for the Cyclones, putting his some 300 pounds to work. Kevin, a senior, 6'8", 298, or 318, or whatever you want to call him. He's a big man. Well, the ball has been moved down to the one-foot line now. And Iowa State doesn't have enough men on the field, I don't believe. Whoops, Iowa State's going to have to call a timeout because they didn't have the right defense in there. Mistake, Iowa State. Well, let's get the house in order here, Cyclones. 11 minutes, 31 seconds to go in the third, and the Cowboys knocking on the door. Something's afoot at the Ingersoll Dinner Theater. I am Miss Tweed, and you've been invited to a marvelous weekend at Lord Ranfer's estate. But something's afoot. Who's next? Who's hexed? The nephew is the uncle's heir. The servants are a crafty pair. Was it Tweed? Was it Greed? All around, suspicion lingers. This one did it. That one did it. You are suspicious. And the butler didn't do it. Find out who did at the Ingersoll Dinner Theater. Call now before it's too late. No. Oh, I, it, it's not too late, Herb. Have you ever seen an aquarium that looks like the Barrier Reef? If not, come to the Aquarium Center and see over 40 tanks with a large variety of unusual and colorful marine and aquatic life from all over the world. The Aquarium Center is open daily from 10 to 5, and it's located just north of the Grand Avenue Gate at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. See you there. It's first and goal to go at the one-foot line for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They trail 12 to 3 here with 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Timmons the fullback, Thomas the tailback in the eye with the double tight end alignment. Quarterback sneak, Ronnie Williams, touchdown Cowboys. And now it's a 12 to 9 ball game. Just lunges ahead, and that six foot four inch size is a big help from that distance, no question about it. You see the helmet of Williams, well, it disappears right there. The Cyclones were there, but that's a little bit close to try to prevent it. Brad Dennis on to attempt the point after now. The holder is going to be Roderick Gaines, who mishandled the snap earlier. This one a high one, but he gets it up. And the point after is good, so now it's a two-point ball game. And keep in mind that Iowa State had a touchdown call back due to delay of game in the first quarter. It, in reality, should perhaps be a 16-10 game, but now it's within kicking distance for either team. There's the Cyclone huddle, trying to gain back some of that first-half momentum. 
Iowa State unable to move in their first possession here in the second half, going against the wind. And it seems like the team that has the wind today is the one that is moving the football. In some games in the past when it hasn't worked out that way, but the Cyclones, Cyclones need to keep this, get the football now, keep it, get a good drive going, get it upfield, and uh, either get a score or get Oklahoma in some deep field position. Oklahoma State a tough time. Thibodeau, Henderson, and Dole back deep to receive. And getting set to kick off for Oklahoma State is Joey O'Donnell. Pat Jones has used a, an array of kickers, place kickers and putters today. The ball blows off the tee again. The scoring drive, five plays, 63 yards in less than two minutes. And I mean, that was an impressive Oklahoma State drive. No, that's one, one pass play of 45 yards, that, that takes a chunk out of it. It's more indicative of the seventh place team in the nation. And the football blows off the tee again, and now they're going to have a holder. Mark Moore will put his finger on the ball. Boy, there's a good football player, Moore. Ooh, free safety. One of the hardest hitters in the Big 8 Conference from Natchitoches, Texas. Only a junior. Be back next year. Well, let's see what happens with O'Donnell's kick. Sailing down. And I believe that Oklahoma State is offside of flag flies. Dole cuts right, comes back left, gets to about the 19, but I think there's going to be offsides against Oklahoma State. Where that flag is, it would indicate that. Yeah, Cyclones, even if he kicks it in the end zone, will pick up a yard and a half. Offsides, Oklahoma State. They'll do it again. We saw that earlier in the first half when Iowa State was down there kicking off in that direction also. So this is somewhat a carbon copy of the first half, but the teams have switched sides. And Iowa State's first drive, they picked up uh, just a field goal instead of a touchdown. Had a delay a game penalty. Somebody told me I didn't really catch it when it happened. But somebody said it was just almost a split second. Uh, sort of thing that it uh, the clock went out and the ball was snapped almost simultaneously well O'Donnell moves back to the 35 and we'll do it again 11 minutes 23 seconds left to play in the third quarter it's 12 10 Iowa State leading Oklahoma State this one a line drive that's gonna go back into the end zone so Iowa State will pick up a yard start out at their own 20 yard line First down and 10 for Kicked it a little further. That lit at about the three or four yard line. It could have been returned, but uh, kicked it over the Cyclone player on that side, Thibodeau. Here comes Alex Espinosa, trying to keep the hands warm. Four of 13, 50 yards, two interceptions. Not a great day by any means for Espinosa. And it's really hard going this direction, right to left, into the wind. See if Iowa State relies a little more on the pass here in the second half. Espinosa gonna throw it. Short one out to Jackson. First down. Plus three. It was a fumble after the tackle. The ball was dead. Mike Hudson makes the stop on Jackson. A 13-yard gain and a first down. Just a little release out of the backfield. Jackson across, right straight over the middle behind the linebackers. Catches the football, turns it upfield. Doesn't look like he has it real securely tugged. Yeah, right there. He was down, and the ball squirted out. Cyclones with their eighth first down of the game against four for Oklahoma State. Jackson came into the ball game with 27 pass receptions for 219 yards and a TD, so he's a good one. Quarterback sneak by Espinosa. And I can't imagine why he's doing it there, but maybe they thought they'd catch Oklahoma State off guard, and Espinosa gets a couple across the 35, barely. Hey, the Cyclones had a, had a wide set in the backfield, which is normally a passing situation, and I think a pretty good call. They only picked up a couple of yards, but uh, might give Oklahoma State something to think about in later series. Sometimes you'll catch a team napping. There's Jim Kreiner looking on. Hugh Suffren to the wide side. To the near side, it's going to be Dennis Ross. Espinosa wants to throw. Going for Suffren. Has 
has him for the first down. He's knocked out of bounds at the 45. Covered by Harry Roberts, the defensive end. Espinosa once again with good protection. Notice the work on the line. Good throw. There's Suffren. Suffren's hammered out of bounds, but enough to pick up the first down the ninth for the Cyclones. They're on the move. Suffren, four for 38 yards. He's had two pretty good games in a row now. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Split set in the backfield. Espinosa with time again going long and overthrows Suffren over his head out of bounds. He was covered by Demise Williams, the left cornerback. To quote the golfers, he caught a flyer. Looks like he released it just a hair quick and it was a sailor way over the head of everybody. Well, you can see the remnants of some of the snow down on the field, the turf ice cold and We've got to hand it to our camera crew who is out in this wind today, and they're doing a super job. Oklahoma leading Nebraska 13-0 early in the biggest game in the conference today. Here's Jackson piling into the line and gets a tough couple. Runs right into Warren Thompson, the defensive end. And the kids are having fun. That's the band. <laughs> well, they, they want new capes. They're up wearing them out. <laughs> There's some of the snow. That's wild. That's the old days when you used to take a garbage can cover or something and go to the biggest hill in town. Big play right here. Third down and seven at the 48-yard line for Iowa State. Espinosa with a little play action to hold the linebackers. Sends one out to Suffren. Incomplete. Fans want interference, but there is none. Espinosa is down on the turf. He gets up okay. Suffren really draws a crowd on the play. Runs a good route. Goes down. Comes inside. The ball should be right there. Goes up for it. Well, I, I can see the fans' concern, but they're both going for the football. Rick Frank on the punch. Oklahoma State drops two deep receivers. Low snap from center. And barely gets it away is contacted by a defender but no flag flies rick frank wanted roughing the uh, kicker but he doesn't get it the ball hit the ground i think if you notice on the snap the ball hit the ground and when it does that you're fair game he's fair game you bet but great field position these cyclones have oklahoma state at the 18 yard line excellent kick by rick frank well now let's see if the Cyclone defense can perhaps mirror their performance of the first half. Well, now there's an official timeout on the field to discuss something or another. Now think about it this year, Mark. We've had, seems like a million officials conferences about something. Now, man, that might have been something that Coach Kreiner on the sideline, ask the official to go talk to the referee. I think that's what's happened. He's gone to talk to the referee and is reporting back to Kreiner the, the report, what the referee said. Well, Iowa State is charged for a timeout then, too. There's only two on the scoreboard. Ronnie Williams, 7 of 19 for 101 yards. And he's been finding some aerial routes lately. This time, straight up the middle to Thurman Thomas. And a good game. A gain of about 12 or 13 as he rambles across the 30 to about the 32, and Lester Williams drops it. Yeah, great blocking in the line once again, and vintage running by Thomas. You watch right there. They take Berthus and turn him around. He gets by Reffner, goes upfield. Now just fine running. Keeps him going upfield, keeps the feet under him, and keeps moving. Good back. Put a trap in on that play, and it certainly caught the Cyclone defensive lineman by surprise. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Williams rolling out, wants to throw, and he's going to be sacked. But he gets back to about the line of scrimmage, maybe even a yard forward before Lester Williams grabs his ankle. Williams rolls out, Lester Williams. You'll see come into the picture at the right side here. Comes off the block and makes the stop. I didn't catch the number of the other player that was there. Turning back inside, Randy Richards. Lester Williams, one of the seniors, playing his final game for Iowa State. Iowa 
State dropping back its defensive secondary, maybe looking pass coming up. Williams is going to throw it. Quick one over the middle. Poor pass. Yeah. And a flag down on the play, and there may be holding against Oklahoma State. And Greg Leiter was down for a minute. I didn't think he was going to get up. Pass hit a lineman right in the back. Illegal. Receiver downfield, isn't it? Wait. The ineligible lineman. Yeah, he hit a lineman in the helmet with a pass. The illegal receiver. That'll be lost it down also. Lester Williams put some pressure on Ronnie Williams there to cause it to happen. It is a loss of down and a five-yard penalty, so it brings up third down and about 15. And listen to the fans rally on the defense. wants to throw it. Going long! And overthrown. It was intended for Lynn Beck, the flanker. And it was thrown out of bounds by a mile. So the Cyclone defense holds. And Iowa State will get the football back. Need to field the punt here and get a, get a decent run back and should have pretty good field position unless he really nails one. Going to be Rich Thompson punting, averaging 32 and a half. Good snap from center and a good punt that is really hanging in the wind. Dole will let it go. And it may... Nope, it's down. Touchback. Thought for a moment Oklahoma State might have had a shot at downing the ball inside the five, but it rolls into the end zone. And Iowa State will take over at their own 20 when we come back. They're serving a double portion of comedy at Mel's Diner when you watch Alice weekdays at 4.30 on 5 TV. Get your mind on something else. Good point. I'm going to get... I'm going to get my mind on something else. I'm going to... Ready to do some cooking. You mean he actually uses his mind when he's hurt? 5 TV, your TV station. American kid, but I'm not. I'm one of several million children living with single parents who depend on child support payments just to get by. We're the reason the government has passed tough new child support enforcement laws. We just want what we deserve. Right? Right. Kids, they're worth every penny. Just ask them. Right? Right. <laughs> State needs a drive. 7.55 to go in the third. A two-point ball game. Thus far, a big upset. High formation for the Cyclones. Jackson gets the call. Upright tackle into the secondary and a gain of 10 and more. 15. Up to the 35. Look at it from up above in the end zone. Good shot of it. You watch Jackson following the blocks. Good block there by the fullback by Thomas. Makes a good move on the defensive back. Now just keeps the legs under him and keeps moving. Good downfield block also by Jeff Wadka, the tight end. Jackson, 69 yards, the leading rusher in the ball game. Now Jackson goes to slot right. Draw play to Kirk Thomas. And a tough four as he keeps chugging away. Hey, I can't hardly believe the change in the Cyclone offensive line since the start of the year. They have just made magnificent progress blocking in front of the ball carry and also blocking for the pass. But the two guys that have made the real big difference are Brent Lawrence and Keith Sims. Sims a 317 pound freshman number 69 at left tackle and you might you get an opportunity to watch him work he's the near man right there in the middle on the end of the line little screen pass out to suffering has he got any running room up to the 45 and close 
close to a first down, maybe just about a half yard short. He didn't have a lot of running, running room, but he created it. Just a little hitch, stepped it forward, waits for the ball, now looks upfield, sizes up the situation, a good move there and a good block. A couple of Oklahoma State players collide and suffering, just looking for the crack, and it's about the length of the football short of the first down. Five receptions, 43 yards for Hughes Suffren. Third and one at the 45. Jackson, first down. James Ham, the linebacker, drops him. But the Cyclones are moving the sticks. Keep in mind that one of the red helmets out there is worn by tight end Jeff Watka. Only one ball has been thrown to Watka in the ball game. And it was a touchdown which was called back. Maybe they'll be going to Jeff Watka a little more here a little, little later on. You know, they might have him covered pretty well, too. It depends on what the Oklahoma State people have done. They might have the tight end just covered like a blanket. Espinosa, first and ten, wants to put it airborne. Jackson, flag down at the line of scrimmage. And I think that was a little screen pass, perhaps, as an option, and maybe holding. Yeah, it's not really a screen. It's just across the middle. The back comes out of the backfield into where everybody's out of. And there's going to be a holding call. It's really unfortunate. Jackson is working hard. Espinosa is throwing that pass as well as he had all year. It's not a pass that you bury in the guy's hands. You just lob it over there and let him catch it nice and easy and run with it. The holding call will be on number 69, freshman tackle Keith Sims. And he fell on the guy is what happened, actually. Lost his footing trying to make a block and literally tackled his defender. Numbers starting to hurt somewhat now. Penalties in favor of Iowa State. That's not something you want on your side of the column. First and 20. Espinosa throws it away. Receivers covered well. Number 80, John Washington, just overpowered his blocker. He just he just took Hundorf, I think it was, and really worked him over, got by him, and Espinosa had to get rid of that. But that's something that he might not have done earlier in the year. I think that's one of the areas in which he has improved greatly. Still a 12-10 game. The Cyclones with a lead, and... Uh, Getting down a little closer to where the Cyclones will have the wind at their back. Receivers split to both sides. High formation. Jackson trying to find a hole. Gets across the 40 to about the 42. It's going to bring up third down and a mile. The fans wanted a little late hit call or something there. Third and 16 at the 42. Andrew Jackson. What a workhorse he's been today. Ross to the far side, Suffren to the near side. They're going to put double coverage on Suffren. Flagged out of the backfield. Intended for Suffren. Fans want interference, but it's not there. And it may be holding against Iowa State again. Oh, the fans are really worked up. Watch it downfield. See Suffren. Right to all. Tackle before the ball got there. Or it looked to be in that particular shot. Kind of a distant shot. But it uh, looked to be like he was hammered before the football arrived. In any event, it was illegal use of hands against Iowa State. The penalty decline brings up fourth down and 16. And Iowa State will have to put away the football. Frank back in the punt formation. Jim Kreiner looking on and chatting with some of the offense. Frank gets a good snap and a good punt. A great punt. A great punt. Job. 47, 48 yards. And Iowa State hanging on to a two-point lead with 4.20 to go in the third. It's not too late, Herb.
that you were involved in it. Involved in what? The whole Rhinewood affair. Next, on Dynasty. Well, I wouldn't tie too many emotional cords, dear, if I were you. But you haven't heard. Haven't heard what? Stephen grew up with a mother who was no better than a tramp. His son is going to grow up with a decent woman as his mother. I will not stand by and see Crystal become his mother. What is she disgraced to give Danny to someone else? Dynasty. Mm -hmm. Wanted all across America. The free consumer information catalog from the U.S. government. Here they are. The catalog with more than 200 Beckfield Federal publications, many free. Go to get your free catalog right. Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. It was interference on suffering. You judge for yourself. There's also a holding call on the play, but you watch downfield. He had his arm around him, looked to be he was tackling him. It's, well, the official's there, and you have to go by what they say. 420 to go in the third. 12-10. Oklahoma State doing some shifting with their tight end right now as they start out first and 10, deep in their own territory. Hand off to Thurman Thomas. Gets about three to about the 13. Randy Richards in there on the pile, along with, I believe, Perry Lowers. Not much running room. Pull the guard, come over, and not Gibson out of the play, but uh, other Cyclones are there to make the stop. Pick up just a couple. Actually blocked Perry Lowers into the play to make the tackle. Lowers got credit for the stop. 3.50 to go in the third, and then Iowa State will have the win. Total offense still in favor of the red and gold. Lone setback, Williams with a draw. He will not get the first down. Quarterback draw gets up to about the 18-yard line. This is either a down, this is a call play. He looks, now goes back down. They look like they're pass blocking, but it's a, I'm just almost positive it's a call play, and it's a good effort by Williams. But a big play now for the Cyclones. The fans are on their feet, trying to rally on the defense. Third down and three. Thomas will not get it. Well, let's see where they spot it. I think they may have it. They got a generous spot on that play. Oh, I think they got a heck of a generous spot. I don't think they ever got across the 20-yard line. measure it. They're going to measure it, but watch the blocking and watch where the football goes. Thomas is up right there. It looks to me like he's right above the 20-yard line. They push him, push him back behind, and they've spotted it pretty generously. I just don't believe that. First down, Oklahoma State, and the fans don't like it. Oklahoma State hangs on to the football, and there are the men responsible for today's game, headed by John Lurie, the Big 8 referee. And that was a pretty generous spot. First and 10 at the 20. Williams with a play-action fake. Going across the middle, has his man at the 35. And it's collected by Terry Weimer, the split end. Coverage provided by Richards and Manning. Straight back drop. And he'll get the man right straight over the middle. Ran it into a little open spot in the Cyclone zone. Three players there, but uh, pass already completed. First down for Oklahoma State. In the eye formation. Williams again, the blitz on, and he's going to throw it away, and does. It was intended for the tight end, Kenneth Brown. Bodies collide downfield, but no interference. Aaron Manning right there with Brown. Williams today having a tough day getting his passing game going, but boy, when he connects, it's always a big play. 
Brings up second down and 10 at the 35. Stops the clock with 2.09 to go in the third. And the shadows start filling the field here as the sun sets in the west. Iowa State showing blitz. And they're coming. Williams going long again. Almost intercepted by Terrence Anthony. Well, Anthony had it in the hands, and it was a little bit behind him. He had to kind of reach back for it. Pass intended for Lynn Beck. Cyclone's coming with a lot of people, and Loris gets there just a little bit late, but the pass overthrown, and Anthony had it, bobbled it, and Oklahoma State gets another chance. Terrence Anthony. Junior will be back next year, and again, the Cyclone fans on their feet. They want to stop the Cowboys. Third and ten. Williams wastes no time, throws to the sideline. It's incomplete. 